Hi there, Ram owners. Today in your 2022 Ram 3500, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the ProPride weight distribution system. Now, before we install our weight distribution system here, let's get a feeling of how this feels just on our test course. We're gonna go ahead and hit our uneven bump section here first, and this is gonna simulate like hitting a pothole. And when we hit it right away, this truck's got some pretty stiff suspension. We can feel that definitely right away. It's actually taking this weight fairly well. We don't have a lot of oscillations up and down, um, but it is fairly stiff, which is probably because this has a stiff suspension system on it. We definitely can feel the back. When the back tire goes up, you kind of feel the thud and a little bit of oscillation there up and down from the weight of the trailer. But honestly, this truck is doing a fairly good job of uh, handling the weight here. I can feel that the front's a little bit up in the air. And when we hit the, we're on the even bump section now, when we hit the bump here, we do feel a little bit of a, a rise in the front, like the weights in the back's kind of tipping us up just a little bit. But overall, I, I gotta say, I'm a little so impressed with this Ram here. It does seem to be handling the trailer pretty good. Now, with as big as this trailer is though, and all the crosswinds you get out on the highway, I could see some sway potentially occurring and stuff because of its massive size. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the shop, get our weight distribution system installed, and we're gonna see how this feels. Okay, now before we do hit our test course, uh, well, a couple of little things I wanted to talk about so you could um, kind of keep an eye on this because we're gonna, we got our GoPro set up here. We're gonna be recording our movement here on the test course so you can see the head moving. But it's easier to kind of you get an idea of how the, the head moves and why it moves the way it does. So we've got the, your ball hooked up in here, you know, from our hitch box, but it no longer is gonna pivot here on the ball. And the reason why it's not gonna pivot is because this is our new pivot points. So you've got one located here, and I mean, this is the other end of it here where, it, where they pivot. So you've got like from here to here, this is a pivot point. And then this mechanism where it meets over here is a pivot point. So now there's two pivot points on each side, and that changes how we're pulling our head. Before we just had a single point. So if sway begins when you're pulling from a single point, it can kind of do that. Now that we've got two points, you know, if you take a, a string and you put it to like a little car and you were to pull it from the single point versus pulling it from two corners, the two corners is much more stable. And that's kind of what this is kind of simulating. It's giving it kind of that Y pull to help straighten it out. So the reason why this cannot pivot anymore is part of this mechanism here. If we look at these arms where they go down under our trailer, they meet at the middle of our uh, cross brace here and that yoke piece that's inside of here um, is pretty much what prevents the trailer from pivoting on the ball because if the trailer wants to turn this way it has to hit the that yoke has to hit and it's going to cause this mechanism to move and then of course you get your standard uh, weight distribution properties from your arms down here to help distribute that weight appropriately so that's this that's kind of the main anti-sway portion here and it pretty much eliminates sway like i, I don't want to say anything's ever a hundred percent but this is about as close as you're going to get so it's really cool by adding that the, the way you're moving from that single pivot point to kind of the multiple it definitely changes that the the structure of how it's pulling it and if you do get like a little tiny bit of sway it should correct itself very fast because of of the way you're pulling it so one more thing i just wanted to show you and this is this is more just for the next time you go to use your, your system if you unhook or anything. We already took our measurements from here to here and we made them the same side to side. We know our truck is sitting right where we want it. We're gonna take our paint stick here and we're gonna mark the bottom right here. We're gonna mark the bottom on this side and the bottom on the other side. And this is just a useful thing to have for every time you wanna unhook and hook up, you can just line your mark right back up here on each side and that, that way you don't have to get your measuring tool and all this stuff every time and recheck your truck's ride height. If you set this up to this, it should be the exact same as it is now every time. So we'll mark the other side just so we got that because we're gonna be doing some unhooking here to talk about this some more um, and we wanna be able to recreate this, this position every time easily. All right, so time to hit the test course here. We're coming up on our course up here in the first section of our course is going to be the uneven bump section and that's going to simulate like hitting a pothole. All right, and it feels like, it almost feels, um, kind of feels like there's a little bit more weight in the back with our weight distribution on. And that's, that's in a way kind of a good thing. 
because uh, after talking to the customer, this thing had a bit of a sway issue going on, so I went with the Pro Pride, and I measured his tongue weight, and he is quite a bit below uh, where he should be. Um, ideally, you're that 10 to 15 percent. He was closer to about 8 percent, so a little bit low, might even be a little less than that. So. Uh, it feels like we've added some weight back there and it's stabling out the back a little bit. We feel the weight kind of go down in the back now when we hit. Before, it almost felt like it might have been slightly lifting up on our truck uh, when we were hitting it. You know, it was, all, it was almost like, that's why I thought the suspension, like, man, this truck's got great suspension. I almost don't even feel the weight and that was mainly because of the tongue weight. So at highway speeds, that would have been much worse um, on sway and how it feels. We went over the even bumps and it was a very similar story. Uh, it felt pretty much like it did before they're going over the bumps, but it did feel like we had a little bit more weight on the back. Not to where it was bouncing or anything, just, just felt a little bit more, uh, more stable having a little bit of weight there in the back. All right, so now we've hit our bumps course. We're gonna take this thing out on the road and get it up to, uh, to a little bit higher speed to see how it feels because our customer was saying, hey, he's having issues of around 60 mile an hour with some sway stuff going on. So we'll see uh, if we've corrected those issues here. So we're gonna hit the highway here. We've got Bob driving. He's gonna drive for us. Uh, and we're gonna see how the Pro Pride handles here. So here we are. We got, Dave's got the Pro Pride on. We're going down the highway. Let's see how it feels. It's rolling out really good. It feels a lot better. It looks a lot better as far as the tongue height now is level. When he came in, it wasn't level. He was having a lot of problems driving anything over 50 miles an hour. So when we get out on the highway here, we'll try and get it up around 60 or so. All of the weight in the back of the trailer with it being a toy hauler, and there's a Harley side-by-side uh, -side and a generator back there is, uh, was contributing factor to his uh, sway problems when trucks would pass and in the wind and just getting over 60 miles an hour, he couldn't do that. So we'll see how we go here. So far, it feels great, like no problems. I ain't worried about it. A um, little bigger trailer than I'm used to, so I'm more worried about just staying in my lane, watching my mirrors. Shoot, I'm already at 60 with no problems. Didn't even realize it. Um, and he said 60 was like a carnival ride. So <laughs> this is way better than what we had. A little squirrely there. Slow her down a little. Yeah. Squared up. Yeah, it is very, very, very touchy, this trailer is. Wow. I think it's tongue weight. I think we need to move some weight around a little. Yep, we got to get some weight forward on this trailer. Or this is not going to work. Because I'm in the red zone here. So it took weight off. This sway got started. And then as soon as I used the brake controller to apply the trailer brakes and got her slowed down to a speed below 60, she straightened back out, but at that point, at that 60 mile an hour point, you could tell it wasn't going to straighten out unless you slowed down and hitting the truck brakes wasn't going to be the best option in that case. The best option was going to be to use the brake controller. So we're going to get this thing turned around, get back to the shop, get some tongue weight in the trailer, and then give it another shot because I believe at this point it's the tongue weight. Um, and we'll check and make sure we got plenty of uh, plenty of tension in the spring bars too. All right, due to the extra weight that we've got in the back here, we're going to correct our tongue weight by moving this small ATV here out of the back, and that should drop off a significant amount of weight here in the back, raising our tongue weight up weight up to a normal amount. Okay, we're. Uh... Back in the truck, we got the side-by-side uh, -side single seater, I guess it is, out of the truck. I mean, out of the back of the trailer to give us some more tongue weight. Then we're back out on the road to see how we handle 
Um, I think our main issue is tongue weight. Um, the Pro Pride system allowed us to go to do better than what the customer originally experienced, but not uh, nothing like what I felt was safe and, and a quality ride. So here we go. I get out of the parking lot here and uh, back on the road and see what the uh, sway situation is like. So there's 60. Give it a little wiggle. Are you doing something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Give it a little wiggle. It feels much better. The trailer doesn't look like it's moving near as much. That's good. I do feel that little bump every once in a while from the way that's different back there. Um, uh, what do they call that? The yokes moving? Yeah, that is yokes. The whole assembly they call it the hitch box. Yeah, yeah, the hitch box, the way there's two pieces turning and every once in a while when you're in a turn and you kind of straighten out, you do feel a little bump, but that's seldom. And, only when you're kind of hitting the gas hard. Uh, right now at 60, it feels good. This is that bump we were at before, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, going over here and see if we get squirrely again. That's it, right there. And one more right here. Yeah, that was way better, so we get off this ramp here, we'll see how uh, it does maybe going just a little faster. We're basically at 60 there when that happened, a little 59, 60, so we'll get her going a little better than that out here on the highway. Another spot I felt it was right here over this next little ridge, so we're going a little faster now, 63. We'll see how this little ridge does when we go across it because we're in a turn and top of the hill. Oh yeah, right over it now. Perfect. And we're at 66. Before I wouldn't even thought about going 66 miles an hour. So. Just kind of keep it at 65 here for a minute and see how it goes. Yeah, good confidence in it now. Get in front of this truck, I'll do a pretty good lanes change here and see how that goes. I'm gonna change to the right lane. No worries there. Went right in the lane, stayed right behind the truck. Didn't come come out on either side at all. Now we're at 70 and just rolling right along. So now we got a big truck passing us here on the highway and we're doing about 63. Here he comes. I feel him suck me in a little. And I feel me push, feel him push me out a little, but it didn't become a, a sway incident like the customer was talking about before. So that's awesome. That was much better there than what we were experiencing earlier and what the customer's been experiencing. So we get the tongue weight straightened out and everything, uh, get all his toys configured properly. This thing will run down the road as fast as he wants. So that should do it. And this is what our Pro Pride looks like when it's installed. It can, is a completely different mechanism and way of hooking up to your trailer than your typical uh, weight distribution system. You no longer use your ball and your trailer no longer pivots on your ball. It pivots on this mechanism here. And since it has two points, it for the most part gets rid of sway almost entirely. And having two points here is definitely gonna make a difference um, compared to a single point. But uh, with our tongue weight being a little off, we'll see how that plays out and see how it goes. And we may end up having to shift some weight in the end. But we can definitely see here how this all works. We've got the two pivoting points here versus the one. So when you're pulling with a single point, the, the trailer could potentially sway. A sway occurs and it's moving on one point. With the two points here, we're pulling from two locations. So if it tries to sway, it has to push this direction, but it's a solid arm here, so it can't push that way. 
and it, it wants to pull also on this one from this point, but it can't pull it because that's a solid connection. And so the trailer can only kind of just move side by side, but it's not going to sway. As long as the trailer is in a straight line, the forces are still going to be going forward with our truck. But if the trailer, like with a single point here, pivots this way, its forces are now going that direction. And on the back of our truck, that's going to make us want to go this way, probably right into the ditch. So you can see how the angles on the ProPride here can help to eliminate sway greatly. Now, the main thing that I dislike about the ProPride is that this whole system here stays on your trailer and you have to hook up using the stinger that comes included with the ProPride. I find this more difficult to attach than a regular coupler. You definitely want a set of eyes back here and a camera really didn't help me out too much with this just because the, the mechanism is all black and it's so big it kind of disappears in your camera. Um, but other than that, this is definitely a far above the rest as far as weight distribution and anti-sway goes. But uh, I, I just dislike the Stinger. Now there is a little side benefit of having the Stinger on here is that you do get kind of uh, security built into that since you have to have this specialized tool to hook up. I'd recommend putting the lock here on your coupler so that way nobody can uncouple the head mechanism and hook up to your ball. They have to, will then have to have the proper Stinger. So now that we've covered some of the features of our Pro Pride here, we're going to show you how to get it installed. Now before we install our Pro Pride, we're going to want to take some measurements on the trailer and to see how it's going to fit on our trailer because there's a good chance you may need to move some items around, which may end up, you know, you may need to purchase some additional components in order to move stuff around. So I went ahead and I pulled the tanks off just to get them out of the way so we can see more easily. And we're going to take a look at a few of the parts that goes on our trailer here. You're going to have one of these risers on each side and it sits on top of your frame like this. These are going to need to sit at 26 inches back on your trailer. So if we look at the coupler here, we went ahead and we marked the center um, from both directions there. And then we could use that to make our measurements from here on the side. So from our center of our ball there, 26 inches back puts us right here. Our tube here, the front edge of that needs to match up with that. And if we slide that right up to where that 26 inch mark is, our tanks here actually stuck out and they would have been in the way. We wouldn't have been able to get our cover back on. So it's okay though, in our kit, you do get a little bit of leeway. So 26 inches is the ideal mark, but you get a one and a half inch plus or minus that you can install this. And that's where the, again, the front edge of this component needs to sit. So if we go one inch and a half this way, it's gonna make our conditions even worse, but we can go back an inch and a half and when we're at this location here, that does give us enough room to clear our tanks and allow us to put the cover and everything back on. So that's the first thing we want to check, just kind of get an idea, hey, is this going to fit? Do I need to move some things around? Get an idea of on the inside of the frame, since you know there's clamps on the frame, do you have wires and hoses that run down there? So that's, that's kind of the first thing that we want to get our clearance for. You'll do the exact same checks over on the other side, and if you've got any components over there that you need to move, uh, you'll move those as well, but they should be the same distance back. So if on one side you set it up for this larger measurement of 27 and a half inches, the other side needs to also be at 27 and a half. They need to be the same. So we'll set this out of the way. The next thing you want to make sure you have clearance for is your center brace here. The center brace installs on the bottom of your trailer, and it goes across it. And this is going to sit back roughly 22 inches. When you go to adjust the trailer, it does move slightly forward or backward a little bit for its final adjustment. But for just kind of a rule of thumb on where it's roughly going to sit to start is at 22 inches from that center. And that mark was right here. So if we look at our trailer here, our uh, tank bracket here that held our tanks on is right here at this mark. And these components are held on with U-bolts here. So you can see here that this U-bolt uh, we were able to get it in here by raising this tray up, stacking some washers underneath of it, and then screwing it back down with some longer self-tapping screws. Sometimes this tray is welded on, and if that's the case, you may need to have it uh, cut, cut off, and then reattached, whether you get it welded or you use like a self-tapping method to get it reattached. We do have other trays available here at eTrailer, so if your tray that you currently have just isn't gonna work with your setup, you can check out the ones we got here at eTrailer to try to find one that's gonna fit a little bit better on your trailer. So we raised it up on both sides and we went ahead and slid the U-bolts in uh, just so we would have those in place here. These U-bolts here are the smaller of uh, the U-bolts that come in your kit. 
So now that we've inspected the trailer and kind of looked at what the components are that we're going to be putting on it and the things we'll potentially need to move out of the way for proper clearance, we need to get some measurements here on our truck and our trailer next so we can get this set up properly. So first measurement we want to take is here at the back from the ground to the lip here and we're right at about 41 inches on this. We're then going to go over to the front of our truck and we're going to take the same measurement here at the front. And here at the front, looks like we're just a little bit, a little bit lower at about 40 and a half. So we're gonna also measure on the other side of our truck as well, just to see if there's a variance from side to side. And we're gonna record those in the instructions that come included with our kit. The instructions are really important. They have really good um, cheat sheets in there for you for marking down all your measurements and how that's gonna break down later on. So I highly recommend using that and recording them. So I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing myself here. So we got our measurements marked down. I need to add a half inch uh, for the driver's side here. It's a little bit higher on the one side. We're then gonna to go to our trailer and make some measurements. Before we do that, on the next page, you're gonna have a measurement for your hitch. So while we're here at the truck, we might as well get this hitch height measurement. And what we're measuring is from the ground to the top inside edge of our hitch. And we're right at about 21 and a half inches. So we're gonna mark that on our sheet and then we're gonna head over to the trailer for measurements over there. All right, so here we are at our trailer. One of the first things you wanna do is just set your level right on here and then level it. If you got a bubble level on the side of your trailer, you can use that. We're not gonna go strictly off of that bubble level. That's just gonna get us relatively close. because so we need to be as accurate as possible when setting up our Pro Pride. So after you get it relatively level with your bubble level, we're gonna measure from the ground to the bottom of the frame at both the front and the back and make sure they're the same number to know we are 100% as close to being as level as we possibly can. So we've got our trailer here roughly adjusted to level. The bottom of our I-beam right here, we're gonna measure up to that. And we're right at about 27 inches, about an eighth an inch above. So then we're gonna to head to the back of the trailer now and we want to go all the way to the back. Mm. Now here at the back of the trailer, we're going to measure to the bottom of the I-beam. And if we look here on this trailer, you can see it's got this like extension piece on it here. We measured from the I-beam there at the front, so we want to measure to the I-beam here on the back. And we're right at about 27 inches with about an eighth of an inch on it. So that's perfect. We're about perfectly level front to back here. So we've got our measurement set up here. Next, we're gonna measure up at the coupler at the front. So now we've got our trailer level now. We know it is based on our front and rear measurements. So that means we can measure our coupler height now with it being perfect. And we're right at about 26 and a half inches here. So we're gonna mark that in our book as well. All right, so now we need to attach and assemble the stinger here where it's gonna go into our trailer. This is gonna be the truck side of your Pro Pride. Everything else is gonna go on your trailer side. So we need to determine how to assemble these pieces. First thing you wanna know is after the measurements you took in your instructions, you're gonna use your coupler height and you're gonna subtract five and a half inches to get your box height for your hitch box. That's gonna sit right below it here. <clears throat> we need that number because that's where we need our stinger to sit here once we've got this thing in the receiver of our hitch. So that way this lines up with our trailer properly. So we're subtracting five and a half inches from our coupler height. And then we wanna compare that to the receiver height on our truck. And ours ends up being that our truck sits about a half inch higher than what our hitch box is once we've got it all hooked up. So since it's a half an inch, it's pretty close to equal. We're gonna be setting up these so they're basically level with one another. So it's basically sticking straight out. In your instructions, you'll use those measurements to determine the position of these pieces. Um, because if you have, if your truck sits about, about level like we are, we want these plates to sit up like this. If it's way higher than that, then we may need this to sit down. If we got like more than four inches on our truck over where our hitch box is gonna be, then we're gonna position this differently. But since we're about the same, we're gonna be here. And then again, if your hitch is significantly lower than where your hitch box is gonna be, you'll wanna put that in the appropriate orientation. Uh, so if you're like more than four inches lower, you'll have it like this, but if you're only like a 
like an intro solo or you'd have it the other way. So just make sure you're referring to your directions and the difference that you have between your hitch box number. Uh, as long as the, the hitch box and your truck measurements, they fall in line, you'll use those information in your instructions to get this in the appropriate orientation. So this is what we need for ours since we're only about a half inch above our hitch box. We're pretty, pretty close to equal. So it's basically gonna hook up just like this. We're gonna want that in the rise position like this. We're gonna line it up. And before we push that all the way in, you have a pin here that comes in your kit. And you have four washers that come on it. A good starting point is to just put two washers on there. And this is how much, this is how we're gonna adjust the tilt for our head. Um, since our tongue weight on our trailer is a little bit less than what we would like it to be, we're gonna go with uh, only two washers. If your tongue weight's normal, um, your typical 10 to 15%, then this is usually gonna be enough. If you're getting a little bit up towards the 15%, maybe a little higher, you might need to add some more washers. So it's mostly dependent on tongue weight on how much tilt we're gonna need. Again, we're not gonna have hardly any tongue weight uh, that we need to compensate for with this truck and trailer combination here. So we're just gonna go with the two washers and then slide our pin in. The pin needs to go in the top hole. If we look here real quick at this piece, there's a hole here because you may, per your instructions, you may need to put these plates down based on your hitch measurements. So you'll always put this pin in the top hole. Now, we want ours to have the side plates facing up, so we're, we're gonna use that hole here then because that's the top hole for us. So now we got our pin inserted, we need to line up our holes properly based on our measurements. So I'm gonna turn this sideways just a little bit here, just to make it easier, because ours just needs to be in pretty much the lowest position here. And it doesn't like to sit on the table in that position very well. So there we go, we can slide it on like this lining up our holes here. For us, we want this to be at the lowest position just because that's where everything lined up for us. So we're gonna put our bolt through the single hole here at the bottom until it comes out the other side. Sometimes it can be tight due to the powder coating and stuff on that, and all these parts are extremely heavy. So it just makes them hard to work with. Everything is such, Solid heavy metal, there we go. We'll then put our lock washer on there. I need a little bit more threads through there, it looks like. So we're just kind of threading it on through. And then we'll get that started on there. So that's the position that we need it to be in there. So there we go. Next, we need our shank here for our adjustments. Make sure that is pushed up all the way against the pin here. So we need that all the way up against the pin. Once you've got that up against the pin, we can take the next bolt. These are all the same size. We need to put a washer on this one first though because of the slot here. This is gonna go through the slotted hole. On the other side, we're gonna place another washer and a nut. We're then gonna do the same thing with our lowest hole down there. It's got a washer on it. We're gonna put a washer on the other side and a nut because these are slotted holes. All right, so now that we've got all of our bolts through here, really all that's left is to tighten and torque it. We're gonna put this in the truck receiver to do that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to our trailer now because it's really all that's left on this thing is to tighten and torque. One of the things you can use this for that can come in handy where you might wanna go ahead and do that now is if you're doing this all by yourself. Because if you're doing this all by yourself, the one of the next steps we're gonna have to do is to start getting some components on our trailer here. And this head assembly right here, this thing's pretty heavy. If you got an assistant with you, I find it a lot easier to just lift this up here and then have your assistant lock it in for you. But if you're trying to do this by yourself, this thing's so big, heavy, and awkward, it's difficult to hold it up in here and latch it yourself. So if you're doing it by yourself, you could 
tighten down the bolts over there and you could just slide this on the stinger and then lift your trailer up, back your truck up under it and lower it down onto the ball here. So that's, that's an option if you're doing it by yourself. But we got some assistance with us here, so we don't need to use our truck to do that. It's a bit more pain to do it with your truck, but if you do it again, if you're doing it by yourself, that's an easy option to be able to do that just because you only got the two hands, you're only one person. So we're gonna go ahead and move that stuff out of the way. We'll be heading to our trailer now for this section. So now we're over on our trailer. We're gonna get our jacks installed here. They just sit right on the frame like this with the jack portion on the outside of the frame. We're now gonna line it up with our marks. Now, originally we were gonna try to put it here towards the 27 and a half mark, the furthest we can in our adjustment range to clear our tanks. Um, but what we ended up finding is that the brace cross brace here for our battery is gonna interfere with one of our U-bolts. So we're gonna have to actually put it right at that 26 mark, which is, is the ideal position to have it in. But uh, that's gonna be a little bit closer to our tanks. We may have to do some modification to our tank cover in order for it to go back on. So now we've got that set on here. We're gonna check that after we kind of get this roughly into position to see um, how we can make all this work. So we've got our U-bolt here. This is just gonna slide up through the bottom. Make sure you don't pinch any wires or anything between the frame and your U-bolt. And then it'll slide right up through the jack bracket. On top of that, we're gonna place flat washers and lock washers. And finally, we're gonna thread a nut on there. Now put our other U-bolt in place. Again, check your wiring. We don't wanna pinch anything in between here. And same hardware right on top. Flat washers, lock washers, and nuts. Once we get this side loosely installed here, we're gonna put the other side on and loosely install it the same way. And then we can set our tanks back up on our assembly here and kind of see what our clearance is gonna be like. We got both of our jacks installed. We put our tanks back on. Went ahead and put the top piece on just to brace them. And then we're gonna see what kind of fit we got here and if we need to make any modifications. But that's looking pretty good. We didn't hook all this back up because we're just testing our cover, but it looks like we've got all the clearance that we need there. So that's gonna be all good. We can uh, go ahead and snug those down a little bit more to make sure they stay in place. All right, so now that we know everything clears, we've got them even side to side. We're just gonna go back and snug them up. We're not gonna do our final torque just yet. We just wanna make sure these stay in position on us and don't move while we're working. And we're just kind of going back and forth between them, trying to get them tightened down evenly. So we want to have roughly the same amount of threads poking through the top of the U-bolt on each of them. We're going to do the same thing over on the other side. Next, we're going to be putting on our cross brace. And this is that measurement that we did at 22 inches. That's going to go across the bottom here. Our tanks were right in the way. So in order to be able to install these, we just raised our tanks up. It was just held on by self tappers right here on top of the frame. So we stacked up some washers underneath and then just reinstalled it with those washers in there. That, that gives us our gap that we need to be able to insert our U-bolt underneath of it and put it in the position that we need it in. We're gonna do, so we did the same thing on the other side, got our U-bolt dropped down through here. And you can see it kinda has some pivot to it because we need to go straight across. This is our cross brace that's gonna install on it here. It's gonna sit up on here like this in this orientation. So we can go ahead and get that kind of started. So we're gonna go ahead and raise it up. Make sure that our U-bolts dropping down between the slots. Looks good on both sides. We'll then take our spacer plates here and we're gonna need one spacer plate, two nuts, and two lock washers per side. So let's get those down there. We'll now take our spacer plates and we're gonna slide this up over our U-bolt. There were two holes in that plate and those holes need to line up with our U-bolt. They should slip right over them. We'll then take a lock washer and a nut 
place the lock washer on and then thread the nut on right behind it. Same thing with the other side of our U-bolt here. And we just, we really just need to get this tight enough now just so it stays on here. We're gonna need to adjust this piece later, kind of front and back to properly match up with uh, the yoke component. So that's probably good enough just right there. We're gonna go over to the other side and get our same hardware here on the U-bolt over there. So we're gonna go ahead and put our ball in here now. We've got an assistant, so it's easier to just lift this up. We already kind of discussed about doing this by yourself, using the stinger if you are by yourself, but if you got somebody here that can latch that down, it's a whole lot faster than trying to put that on your stinger and backing your truck up to get that on there. Because we don't need the truck on here for our install to install these parts. You're really, if you're, if you're using your truck for this, it's just to help you lift up this big old heavy component and get it hooked up. There's a plate right here at the front, this little cover. We're gonna remove this just underneath the cover right here. You have two bolts and they're just straight in. They come hand tight when you get them, so you should be able to just take them out by hand. So there's one of them. Here's the other. We'll set this aside and we're, we're gonna reinstall this, but we got some things we need to access under here, so let's just get this out of the way. So now we're gonna go ahead and raise this into position here. If you're doing this by yourself, you can use your truck. We kinda already talked about that. Uh, but we got an assistant. Before we raise it up though, we wanna grease our ball because you're pretty much never gonna take this back out of here again once you get this on here. So this is gonna be our grease. So we're gonna go kinda heavy on it since we don't plan on taking this back out anytime soon. And that'll smash down in there around the rest of it from there. All right, so we lift it up. We've got our assistant latching it for us. And there we go. It's much faster than using your truck if you got somebody to give you a hand. So now we can go ahead and insert our arms. We've got our head assembly in here. The arms are gonna insert in the bottom here. There's a bushing we need to remove. It's, a, it's like a metal bushing. So it's loosely installed here with this bolt. So we're gonna remove the nut. And then it should slide out the bottom here. Looks like it's a little bit stiff in there. There we go. So this is the bushing assembly for our arm here. So here's the little puck that comes with your kit. And that's actually what holds this bar inside of our bushing. It's got a little slot there. If we look at the bar here, you see it's got a slot. Our bushing has a slot. And when it slides down on top, if this puck is inserted in those slots, the bushing can't slide back up because of that little puck. What we need to do before we slide that together though is we just need to put some grease on here to lubricate it. That's gonna allow our arm to pivot and move the way it needs to. And it also helps hold that puck in place while you're reassembling things because that puck likes to fall out of there. So we're just gonna lube this up and we can slide our bushing down on it. And if you keep it towards the top, when you go to slide the bushing on, it will uh, run it down the sides. A little puck just sits right in there. We'll then lift this back up into our assembly. You gotta line this up, get your bolt to line up, and this goes around there. So that keeps our bushing from pivoting, makes our bar have to move inside the bushing. And it looks like it got stuck. Sometimes if it gets stuck, that probably means our puck moved. Oh, there it goes. All right, we got it up in there. Slide our bolt back up through the bottom. And then reinstall our nut. There we go, and our arms can't come out of there now. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side to get that arm installed. So now we're gonna go back and snug these bolts up. We're gonna use a 9 16th socket and wrench to do so. We do wanna make sure these are tight. They got a nylon locking nut on them, so you don't need to like torque these down crazy, but we do wanna make sure that they are snug because that's what's holding our arms in there. If you forget to tighten these down, there's a good chance that you're gonna use this. And the first couple of times you use it, it's probably gonna work okay because the tension's gonna hold the arm in there, but eventually you're gonna hit a point that it's gonna break loose and that arm's gonna come out of there. So don't forget that bolt. So now we're gonna hook up our arms to our jacks here. So if you look, all your hardware stays, it comes assembled on here like this. It's pretty much in the order that we need it in. So we're gonna pull off the nut and the washer, get both of those out of the way. 
make sure you're gonna see that you got these kind of beveled washers here. These need to sit on each side of our pivot piece exactly how they are here, just like this. They're gonna sit in between this piece. So we're gonna pull this bolt out. We're also gonna twist this so that the nylon locking nuts here at the top are facing out towards us. We can then drop this down in between here, and we're probably gonna have to do it one piece at a time. So we're gonna take the washer with the bevel facing in, put our bolt in there, then this is gonna go in here next. Looks like we have to, can't quite lift up on the arm enough, but what we can do is we can adjust the jack here to bring it down. It's up a little bit too high. So if we turn our, the top of our jack here counterclockwise, that's gonna drop the leg down some so we can get this installed. Now we've got it adjusted down in the hole. We're gonna take our bolt here. We want the, the nuts to be facing outwards. So we're gonna insert the bolt from the inside out, go through that beveled washer with the bevel facing towards our pivot point, then go through the pivot point, then place in the next beveled washer with the beveled end, the smaller end of the bevel towards our pivot point. Then we're gonna come out the outside. Here on the outside, we're gonna place on a flat washer followed by a nylon locking nut. And we can go ahead and leave that loose for now. We're gonna get the other side installed the same way onto our arm here. Next, we're gonna put in our yoke assembly. That's this guy right here. When we pulled this out of the box, it did have bolts in it. That's these bolts right here. I went ahead and just took them out. This is the same order that they came in uh, when they were in here. We're gonna take this and we're gonna feed this around our jack here. Just like this. It's a little bit awkward. And then it'll sit like this. And then our arms here will line up with the holes here in the side. So now we're just gonna lift this up and we're gonna slide our bolt through. I would just wanna point this out too. There's a bushing inside of here. Um, so when you take your bolt out, this might slide out of there. That has to be in there. That's to take up the space for our bolt. So we're just lifting this up. We're sliding our bolt through. After we get the bolt slid through, we're gonna place another washer on the other side. I'll clamp all those pieces together for us. And then we can pull it back out just a little bit so we can angle it up and push our bolt through our hitch head here. There we go. On the other side, we're gonna be placing our lock washer and nut. And we wanna leave these loose for now because uh, we're probably gonna have to adjust this a little bit so we can get the bolt installed on the other side. So we're gonna go over to the other side now and with the same hardware, run through to attach it over there. So now the center piece that we had put on, it's got this opening here in the middle. That's for the uh, little T part of our yoke here. So that'll raise right up in there. So you may or may not need to push this towards the rear some to adjust it so we can lift that up. So we're just gonna tap this towards the rear some. You'll also need to center this eventually side to side, so just keep that in mind too as you're adjusting this. All right, and we're just gonna see if that fits. And by the, when we're all done, we're gonna make sure that the distance here is the same on both sides. So there we go, we lifted it up and it seems to be sitting in there pretty good. Ideally, we get this um, to where our centerpiece here and these two side pieces, were, if the side pieces were centered front to back on that piece is our, our final goal. But we can get it to fit now. So since we can get it to fit, we're then gonna take, uh, you'll have a little package in your kit that comes with a bolt, a roller, and a nut. We're gonna take the bolt out of that package, slide it through, then take the roller and set that in place, and then push the bolt through that. And then go all the way through and put our nylon locking nut on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this loose for now because we're gonna need to get our final adjustment here. And all we're gonna do for our final adjustment is we're gonna try to go just a little bit more towards the front of our trailer to get this centered better between uh, the little T of the yoke here. And then we're gonna measure from the front to the back to make sure that our cross brace is the same distance 
after we make sure we got the same distance, we're also gonna make sure that we've got it centered side to side because it can slide back and forth on here. All right, so next we're gonna adjust our yoke here. You'll have two bolts on each side and you can see here that it's slotted to allow you to make an adjustment here with this. The end goal of this adjustment is to have the, this portion of the yoke here parallel with the frame and to have a gap that is between one and two inches between this component and the bottom of our frame. So we're right at about an inch and a half here. We're gonna probably tilt it just a little bit to make it a little bit more parallel, just like that. Still got about an inch and a quarter there. And then we're just gonna snug these bolts up. We're pretty close to being parallel and everything, so we don't need much adjustment on this. And it's kind of looking like we're gonna need to have a wrench on the other side. Oh, there we go. So we already get that one to snug up. And then, yeah, we are gonna need a wrench on the other side for, for this one here. So we're gonna grab ourselves a three quarter inch wrench. We're also using a three quarter socket for the nuts. So we're just pivoting. I'm using my leg here just to give it a little bit of support. Got my wrench on the other side. And then we're snugging that down. We're just gonna head over to the other side now and do the same thing. All right, now that we've got this adjusted, now we're gonna go back through our long list of components that we have left loose and get all of these tightened to the proper torque spec. So now we're going back, these bigger bolts here, you're gonna use a one and an eighth inch socket and wrench for these. And we'll torque on our side bolts as well. We're actually using the wrench that it came with to hold the bolt while we're doing so. And then we'll torque our frame bracket U-bolts and tightening these ones down and torquing them. Every time, every uh, so many turns you do on here, you wanna stop on the one and then move to the other one so that way you're torquing and tightening these down evenly. All right, so we got most of the hardware torqued. There's a few bolts left that don't have a torque spec. This one here, this guy here, and also this bolt here in the middle. For these ones right here, we're gonna just tighten these down until we got a couple of threads showing on the end out here because we need to have a little bit of movement in here. And that's about exactly what we want right there. A couple of threads poking through. You can see it's still got a little bit of play in it there. That's pretty much what we're looking for. Might go just a maybe a half a turn or so on it. There we go, a couple of threads. That looks perfect. This one here, you just want to tighten it until it's snug. It's a nylon locking nut. We've already tightened those down before. Uh, just you just want to double check to make sure that there's no play in it and that you do have it tight. For our middle bolt here that's running through the center with our roller on it, this needs to be tightened down to the point where there's no side play in our yoke here. See how the yoke's got a little bit of side play? So we're just gonna snug that up till we get rid of that play. It still needs to be able to, to move up and down inside of here like this, but we just wanna get rid of that side play. There we go, we got rid of our side play, but it can't move it up and down, so we're gonna loosen it back just a little bit. And that's probably as good as we're gonna get it. We can move it up and down. We've got pretty much all the side play out of it, the tiny little bit that is still there is uh, we don't want it to be too stiff. So that's about perfect right there. All right, so now that we've got all of our hardware here torqued down, pretty much all we got left here is to reinstall our cover. So we're just gonna slide that back on and then put our bolts back in through here and then snug those down. There's one more thing I wanna show you on this before we go over to our truck to get the receiver portion of that installed. I'm gonna snug these bolts down here in just one second, but if we take a look around the side here for our arm, and it's just right here where our arm goes up. There's a grease fitting there as well. Now we already greased these before we pushed them up in there, but this is a quick, easy way to grease these down the road because taking this whole thing apart is a big old hassle. And you're gonna to wanna to grease this about every thousand miles um, or at least once a year 
to make sure that this is uh, stays lubricated. You, you can look in your instructions for further. I believe it's the first thousand miles you want to agree, grease this, and then there's intervals after that. So just double check that, and then it's where you can grease it. I'm going to shoot just a little bit in there too, just to make sure that I did get this fully greased as well. And I'd probably recommend you do that too. Just a couple of pumps, even though you grease it here, this will just further make sure you got it greased. So I'm going to snug down these bolts here at the front with our three quarter inch socket, and then I'll grease those, and then we'll head to our truck. All right, so we're now over here on our truck. If you remember our stinger assembly that we kind of set up way back towards the beginning, we still got some loose bolts here we need to tighten down. It's easiest to do that if it's in your hitch. So we're, we're over here at our truck now. We got our two and a half inch end that's gonna slide into our receiver here, matching up with our two and a half inch. We'll line up our hitch pin hole. And then we're gonna secure this with the included pin and clip. It's not a bad idea. You could also upgrade these to locking ones to protect your investments, uh, which is really would uh, secure your trailer because with the Pro Pride on it, you can actually lock the Pro Pride head on there too. And then with the Pro Pride head hooked up to it, this is the only kind of device that's going to be able to move that trailer. So if that's locked onto your truck, they almost have to like purchase this thing to be able to hook up to steer your trailer. So it's pretty cool. You can kind of get a little bit extra safety and security out of it with uh, the Pro Pride system. So we got that pinned in. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. What we need to make sure we do when we tighten these down is that there's a little bit of pressure upward on this. Because if we look at this pin here, it's loose. And we don't want it to be loose. We want this, the, the shank here, to be pressed up all the way against this pin. So you can just pull up on it like that to make sure that you took out, take out the play. And then we can snug down our bolts here to keep it in that position. So I'm just gonna torque this down while pulling upward. And I actually have my bar underneath the, sh the uh, stinger arm here. And that's when I'm holding the bolt from turn in, I'm also putting that upward pressure I need to keep it towards the pin. We're gonna use 15, 16 sockets to tighten this down. Once we get the one tightened down, double check your pin. Looks like we still got a little bit of movement in it there. So we're gonna still need to hold it up a little. So we're gonna move down to the bottom bolt here and do this one next. And this actually came with your kit. This comes with the Pro Pride. You get a 15, 16 socket and this breaker bar. So now we're on the other bolt. We're pulling up to get rid of that slack. And then we'll tighten this one down. Double check up top, there we go. Our pin's not moving. It's nice and solid, just like we want it to be. So we're just gonna go up here onto our top bolt now and snug this one down. And then we're gonna switch to our torque wrench now and torque these to the specifications outlined in your instructions. All right, when we tighten these down, it's easier if you have your torque wrench on the nut side, that way you're not fighting the resistance and friction of the bolt going through it. We can put our tool that came with our system on the bolt head and then we're rotating it around. So I'm gonna try to use the hitch here as a bit of a uh, brace. And brace it right up against the hitch. And then get this all the way torqued. So we're getting ready to hook up our truck to our trailer. We've got this drill in our hand here so we can adjust the arms. We're adjusting these down and you want to make sure you're using a drill if you're going to use some, a power tool or use a hand tool. Don't use an impact because the, the impact force can shear the pins inside. A drill is smooth in its operation so it won't shear the pin. And you can see here we can quickly raise and lower it with a drill like this. We're trying to adjust it here to get our stinger opening here at the front of our hitch box level and in the kind of the same uh, tilt that we've got here to match our stinger. And then we're going to hop in the truck and we're going to back them up and we're likely going to have to make subtle adjustments with our jack here for our ride height and subtle adjustments on our arms here just to get that perfect angle for this to all line up. It's probably going to take you a few attempts. Uh, just make sure you got yourself a spotter here to give you a hand with it and you should be okay.
We're not gonna attempt to try and hook this in to see if we're close enough here. We're very close. It looks like we are a little offset just to that side a little, but we might be able to draw it in with our cams here. So this is your adjustment here for the tension with your cams. So you can twist that in or out to get more pressure on this. And we need that to line up there. Looks like this one's not gonna line up so well. Uh, but this one here, we might be able to get that started because we can see here that the cylinder kind of portion of this on the end here will fit into this little groove. And this nut here on top will work with the tool that comes with your kit to help you install that. So we'll see if we can't cinch it in with these here. And we're not all the way yet uh, with it. I think I need to adjust it out just a little bit. So we were able to just turn this out. Actually, we brought the, we brought this piece here. We adjusted it so it was further in. Bringing it in makes it easier to install this. You can see there, it's not even touching and it just wants to fall on there. So we're gonna adjust this one out so we get better contact. And that's pretty good, can't do it by hand. Use our tool here. Ugh. Bring it in some to make it a little bit easier to turn. Oh, maybe one more turn it looks like. There we go. We've got them both cinched in. So now we can put our pins on here. And I like to just double check here too, the thread sticking out the back. Because they should be roughly the same amount of thread sticking out the back on each side to know that you got that fairly well adjusted. We'll now drop in our pins to make sure that this stays in place. So this is what our pins look like. We'll open these up. This will drop down in the slot and then we'll just put the ring down to lock it in place. And that'll ensure that we can't come uncoupled here, you know, between our stinger and our hitch box. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take the weight off of our jack here and put it onto our new connection that we've got here. I did also want to mention, I don't think I told you as I was backing up, but you do need to make sure you got your trailers chocks, your trailer tires chalked. You should have them chalked the whole time when you're working on your trailer, but uh, just it is extra, makes extra certain that you got your wheels chalked when you go to back this stinger up because you don't want to push your trailer back, especially if you're sitting on like a piece of wood like we were here on our jack. If you push it back and it falls off the wood, you're going to not be in a happy spot. So we've got all the weight completely off of it now. We're not gonna pull it out yet, so we don't need to raise it all the way up just yet. We're gonna get this thing adjusted. So all the weight is now on our truck. So now we're gonna go ahead and adjust the tension on our arms here. And you can use a drill to do this. Uh, we're using a three quarter inch socket here and there's a hex head on top. You can also use the wrench that comes in your kit. Uh, the wrench is gonna take you a lot longer though, so a drill works really nice. Don't use any impact settings. Uh, so if you got like a hammer drill or don't use an impact drill because that can damage the shear pin inside. It needs to be a smooth motor. And we're just going to kind of run it up to put a little bit of pressure on it. We're going to match the same setting, the distance here uh, from the bottom of the tube to the top of this. We want this to be the same on each side. All right, so we've got both of those adjusted. The distance that we set between the two pieces is about four and a half inches on each side. And we're going to check our ride height measurements now. So here in the back, we're at about 40 inches, maybe just a smidge under. So we're about an inch down from our factory ride height. That's acceptable. Let's go up to the front and see where we're at. And here in the front, we had 40 and a half before, and we're sitting right at 40 and a half. So our ride height's perfect here in the front. So that's exactly where you want it to adjust. We ideally want to get our front to be about exactly the same as our unloaded ride height or within a quarter of an inch plus or minus from there. Uh, ideally, we don't want the nose to be angled down because that means we have too much weight here on the front. In the back, we want to try to get it uh, less than an inch and a half from what our factory ride height was if we possibly can. The front measurement is your most important. All right, since our measurements came out great on our truck, we know we've got it adjusted properly here. So you get these, uh, these are very similar to the ones we used on the stinger to make sure that it stays locked to the truck. These are gonna drop down through the slotted holes here in the top of our adjustment tubes, our jacks here. That'll prevent them from rotating. Just make sure when you, if you do never need to do any adjustments or you, when you go to unhook and you take some pressure off, make sure you remove that pin before sticking your tool on here. All right, so now that we've got this hooked up, we were 
gonna get ready to go on to a test course and see how this plays out. But if we look at our safety chains here, due to all the extra components and distance that we've added here from the Pro Pride, our chains aren't gonna be long enough to connect to our receiver anymore, to our hitch here. So we're gonna need to extend our chains. So we're gonna get some chain ordered and some ends so that way we can get this uh, installed. And then the other thing you wanna check is your wiring as well. You may or may not need to extend your wiring. Um, looks like we got plenty of length on ours here to be able to connect here. So that shouldn't be an issue for us with the wiring, but, uh, but our safety chains is definitely gonna be an issue. So we're gonna address that real fast and then we'll be back here to hit the test course. So we're right outside the bay now. Um, we got those some safety cable extensions here. We just pulled it right out the bay because we were kind of holding the door open so we didn't want to freeze everybody out in the shop. It's pretty chilly out here. So, uh, so we just got it right out here and we're gonna extend these cables right out here. So our ends here, if they don't extend about 24 inches past the end of your coupler, then you're not uh, likely gonna be able to hook up. And you can see here our chain's not gonna hook up. But Pro Pride does make an extension kit, and that's what we're gonna be using. And in this extension kit, you'll get extension chains. We got two of those. You also get an extension for your breakaway cable if you need that. We'll see if we end up needing that. And you'll also get an extension for your wiring. And we already know on this one, we don't need it for our wiring. Our wiring's long enough, but it's cool that it comes with it. You got your end here for your trailer to plug into, and then this will plug into your truck to give you an extension if you did need it. And uh, you could even like, make some kind of bracket to mount that further back or something if you if you wanted to uh we, again we don't need that piece so we're just going to move that off to the side and then we're going to grab our chains here and start getting these on so the first thing we want to do is remove our hooks here off the end it's got a little cotter pin in it that holds it in place so we're just going to straighten out the cotter pin and then we're going to just push it through all right, we got twisted it back and forth for a while until it broke loose and we can pull it out of there. Our pin comes out the other side here. And we're just gonna set these right over there. This is our new components. This is gonna connect our two chains together. So straighten out the cotter pins on the end there. Take that out. And we're gonna hook this right on to our safety chains that are on here. Slide that down. And then we'll twist the end of our cotter pin to make sure that that stays in place. Now we'll remove the pin on the other side here. So we're gonna straighten this out. Pull that out the other side. And now we're going to go to our chain. One of the things I wanted to check though is to see, make sure our chains aren't going to be too long when they're installed. So if we're going to have a hook on it, probably sit up something like this. And that actually looks like that's going to be a pretty good length for us. So we're good to go there. But if it was too long, um, you would probably want to either, uh, you could shave off one of these. There's probably enough room in here too. If we slide this out, you could probably take like and move a link down and then uh, see if this fits in here. Probably will fit though. Yeah, so you can move a link down like this and then our piece will slide through and that, that way you're taking one link out of it. You could, again, move more than one link down. Uh, if you get too many links down, you don't want stuff hanging down here, dragging on the road though, that could grab. So if you got more than one or two, you might want to cut that excess off. You can use a rotary tool uh, or like a reciprocating blade to cut these. I'd probably want to put it in a vise if you were going to use a, a reciprocating blade. Okay, so we got, we got these guys. We know we're going to connect our chain to it. We know it's a good length. So we want the full chain for our setup here. So we're going to that far link sliding it through. I'm going to slide it just the other direction, just for continuity to uh, make our counter pins come out the same side. And we'll slide this pin back in. And then we're going to spread it open. There we go. So now we're just going to reinsert our end here onto our link. 
So we're just going to grab this, slide our pin back through, and reinstall the cotter pin. We do have additional cotter pins here at eTrail that you can purchase. Because uh, I would have liked to have seen Pro Pride give you a couple extra, these rusty cotter pins here. Um, this one didn't break, it did come out of there, but I would just feel more comfortable with a fresh pin over a, a rusty old one. So you can also order those here at eTrailer if you wanted to make sure, because that would probably give yours a quick inspection if you're gonna do this at home. If yours look worse than this, then I would definitely replace them. So that looks good. This is gonna work out. This one is able to clip on there. So I'm gonna repeat the same process now for my other chain so I can get it clipped on over here. So you also get some safety cable extension here, and this is what it looks like. Now our safety cable is long enough that it's not gonna have any issues hooking to our hitch here. So there's no reason for us to add this on there. And this actually works out perfectly in the length uh, to match our chains. So that's great, but I'm gonna show you guys how to use it just so you can see. So we're gonna, just gonna pull the carabiner off of here. So what you would normally do to extend this this guy here, we're gonna unravel. It's got a little bit of tape around it, so we're gonna undo the tape. And if we look here, there's these two little crimp beads. So one of these crimp beads is gonna allow you to make a loop. So we can slide that on there. You can bring this back, bring it down inside of here. Looks like we gotta twist this to make sure it stays twisted. There we go, and that just drops down in there like that, and you get your loop. And you can choose the size of the loop you want. You know, you can make it as big as the customers here. You could have a smaller loop. I mean, that's really up to you for how you want, how big you want your loop to be. But it goes through like that. We'll make the loop just a little bit bigger there. Something like that'll be fine. That'll definitely be able to, you know, go around the hitch and stuff. Give yourself some excess sticking out the back there. You don't need a bunch. Just make sure you got some sticking out. So you can see we've got sticking out of both side. And now we're just gonna crimp this down. And we're actually just gonna use a pair of wire crimpers to do so. There we go. We got a nice solid loop on there. So all we would do now with the other end, you could uh, normally just cut the loop off of this end and then you just slide this on one end of your new cable and then after you cut the loop off of your old cable, you would simply slide your old cable on this other end and then crimp it, and then you would see you'd have that extended that far. Now again, we don't need to extend it on this guy, so we're gonna let him hang on to the rest of this cable here. We've got it, the loop pre-set up for him uh, if he needs it for another trailer or maybe later on down the road. So we'll just put this back in the bag, in the box for him. And then we're gonna hook this up to our hitch. So that's a nice little kit from Pro Pride to kind of give you every everything that you would need here as far as extending your components uh, to compensate for the Pro Pride hitch here. So here's our seven-way extender just to give you a closer look at it. It's pretty much what you would see at the back of uh, most of your trucks. It's got a spring-loaded mechanism on it, so when you're not using it, it helps keep out dirt, debris, and moisture. It accepts a standard seven-way, so your trailer connector here will plug into this. And then you can see it's the other ends, just the same as your trailer connector, just a seven way. That'll give you the extension you need here. And we got about 18 inches of extension uh, with this cable here. You'll receive 17 inches of chain. And the chain that comes with our kit here is rated up to 15,800 pounds. So that's gonna be enough for our trailer here. It's got a max weight of about 12 and a half thousand. So that'll be plenty. You get about 20 inches of extra breakaway switch cable. And that completes our installation of Pro Pride's weight distribution system on our 2022 Ram 3500.